Hi, I'm Eva Murphy from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo, and this is my Leave Insert Maths Grinds channel. I'll regularly add new videos for both higher and ordinary level maths, so make sure you subscribe below and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. In this video, I'm going to have a look at inequalities that have fractions in them or what is known as rational inequalities. So before I tackle this question here, which was on the um, 2012 paper, I want to take you through just a tiny bit of theory about inequality signs. If I had, and we take a simple sum of minus 2x being less than or equal to 4, if you had to solve that. Well, the first thing I would do is change the signs all the way across so that I have 2x minus 4. And what does a, what happens when you change the sign in an inequality? It actually changes the direction of the inequality. OK, so that's the little bit of theory you have to be careful of when you're working with inequalities. If you change the sign in front of x, it changes the direction of the inequality. OK, why am I telling you this? Well, I'm telling you this because when you're faced with um, an equation like this, you don't know if the left hand side will end up being a minus number, just like my minus 2x here, or whether it'll be a plus number. If it's a plus number, we're OK, we can solve it. We don't have to change the direction of the inequality. However, if it's a minus, an overall minus number here on the left, we have to change the direction of the inequality. So that can be a little bit troublesome when you go to solve this because you don't know which direction that inequality sign should be by the time you solve it. So how do we get around that? Well, what we do is we, when we're getting our common denominator, our, um, we, skip, we use a denominator of the bottom squared. Okay, so on the left hand side, instead of taking a common denominator of x minus 3 by 2, like you would in any other fractional uh, equation, we take one of x minus 3 squared. Why squared? Well, squared because if you square any number, you get a plus number. If you square any negative number, because you also square the sign, the minus, you also get a plus 9. So regardless of whether a number is positive or negative, once you square it, you end up getting a positive number. So what we do here is we square the left hand side, not the right, just the left, because remember it was the minus 2x, it was what was on the left of the inequality sign that changed the direction. So we square the piece on the left and thereby we eliminate the unknown as to what sign is the left hand side. OK, so that's the piece of theory that lies behind rational inequalities. So how do I do it? Right. Well, my common denominator is x minus 3 squared by 2. And I'm going to multiply both sides by that. Okay, where did I get the x minus 3 squared by 2? Well, x minus 3 squared because it's a, a rational inequality and 2. Okay, what I do to one side of an equation, I'm doing to the other to preserve balance. And what you see happening then is one of those x minus 3s cancels with one of these x minus 3s, and the 2 cancels with the 2. So that you're left with x minus 3 by 2 by 2x minus 5 is less than or equal to x minus 3 squared, and I'm going to write it like this, by 5. This here is x minus 3 squared. It's x minus 3 by x minus 3. OK, how do I multiply them? Well, you can only really multiply two brackets first. So 2 by x is 2x. 2 by minus 3 is minus 6. So that's the answer to that part. And I must multiply the answer by the other part. Is less than or equal to. <clears throat> and it doesn't matter what order I multiply in. Um, multiplication is good that way. So x by x, 
x squared, x by minus 3, minus 3x, minus 3 by x, minus 3x, minus 3 by minus 3, plus 9. And I still have to multiply that right-hand side by 5. Okay, let's keep going. So now I have 2x by 2x is 4x squared, 2x by minus 5, minus 10x. Remember, at any stage, you should stop this video and see can you get it out yourself, okay? And the rest of the video will be there if you get stuck. 5 by x squared, 5x squared, 5 by minus 3x, minus 15x, 5 by minus 3x, minus 15x, 5 by plus 9 is 45. And in a similar way, if you find another uh, question off an exam paper, a mock paper or your book, don't be afraid to post it onto the um, channel and we'll take a look at it for you. OK, so to finish this off, then I'm going to bring everything over to the left hand side. So that anything on the right now is going to change sign. So I will have 4x squared minus 10x minus 12x plus 30 minus 5x squared plus 15x plus 15x minus 45 my inequality sign and now there's zero on the right because i've brought everything over to the left so let's start tidying there's my x squared so that leaves me with minus x squared there's my x's so on my calculator, minus 10, minus 12, plus 15, plus 15, and I'm getting plus 8x. And then I have 30, minus 45, so minus 15 is less than or equal to 0. Okay. I'm going to change the signs all the way across. And I just do this, it's not necessary, I just find it easier to work with a positive x squared when I'm solving a quadratic. Now watch, I've changed the signs. I've changed the sign here of x squared, so it changes the direction of the inequality. Just what I was talking about at the start. Okay, if I change all of these signs like I've done, then it changes the direction of the inequality. Okay. So let's solve this. My guide number is 15. My factors is plus 15 minus plus 1 minus 15 minus 1, 5 and 3, minus 5 minus 3. Okay, so I need minus 8. So this is the correct uh, pair of factors that's going to give me minus 8. So split the x squared into x and x. Split the 15 into the correct set of factors because all of these here are the right factors of 15 but only one set gives me the minus 8 in the middle so it's minus 5x minus 3x okay so i'm getting my apologies not an x yeah i'm getting x minus equals 5 x equals 3 okay and these are what I still like to call my critical values. Okay, so I, I'm not fully done. Okay, and I'm not fully done because I swapped to an equals to, to sign it. I haven't really taken care of the greater than or equal to zero part. Okay, so how do I do that? Well, I'm going to draw a little graph for you here. Okay, and I'm going to have a look at my, 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 my function and you can see it cuts through the x-axis at x is equal to 5, x is equal to 3. So somewhere here lies my quadratic. Okay, this point here is 3, this point here is 5. Okay, why did I draw the smiley face? Because I'm going to look at, I'm going to consider this function here where x squared was a positive number, and for as long as that's a positive number, your quadratic is a smiley face. Okay, if I had taken this version, that would have been a sad face because it's a minus x squared. And it doesn't matter which one you take, as long as your uh, inequality sign um, is taken into account when you're solving it. 
Okay, so just like I did with an inequality in another video, um, I'm going to ask you, when is this graph greater than zero? Okay, well, up here, anywhere above that zero line, so I would call this one here my zero line, up here is greater than or equal to zero, down here, below that zero line, is when it's less than or equal to zero. Okay, so if we have a look at R1, this is our function that we are plotting, we are going greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so we're up here. So this curve, I would say, is greater than zero when x is less than three, because you can see three goes on forever, and when x is greater than or equal to five. Okay, so when x is less than 3 and when x is greater than or equal to 5. Okay, for those who are on the ball and spot it, you will see that I don't have an equal to sign here on the 3, but I do have on the 5. Okay, well, it's greater than or equal to 0, so that's why... That's why it's on the 5, okay? Because at 5, it's equal to 0. Why is it only less than 3? Well, if you come back up to the sum, can you see here at the bottom, the uh, denominator is x minus 3, okay? You can never divide by 0 in maths. So if I had x was greater than or equal to 3 there, you would be dividing by 0 and therefore breaking the rules of maths. So it's not less than or equal to 3, it's just less than. Okay, and that's your full answer. So this piece here is the answer to this question. The examiner is also expecting the graph or a version of it. There's a few ways of doing the test where you figure out which way it goes. If you've enjoyed this video, then why not join us in IT Sligo and use maths in practice? In conjunction with industry, we've designed an exciting new program in electronics and self-driving technologies which uses cutting edge techniques such as artificial intelligence, computer vision and virtual and augmented reality. You'll need a H5 in maths to qualify. Check out the link below.